Demon Mama's thoughts on Breaking Bad, of which there are many. Uh, uh, Breaking Bad is a really old show, so um, spoilers. I'm going to spoil everything. Uh, the entire show will be spoiled. Um, if you haven't seen it, I swear to God, I'm probably the only person who hasn't seen it. Um, and it's fucking great. So let's talk about Breaking Bad, okay? So first I'm going to give you the summary. Breaking Bad is one of the best t TV shows ever made. S probably the best show of its era and easily one of the only true successes of the prestige television genre. Um, there are a lot of bad, there's a lot of bad prestige TV shows, but Breaking Bad is not one of them. Breaking Bad is excellent from beginning to end. It is fantastic. Um, and I truly, truly, truly cannot, uh, recommend it enough. It is a hilarious, painful, amazing show that is exciting to watch from beginning to end. What do I mean by prestige show? Okay, prestige television is... How do I describe this? Uh, fuck. I, I... There is, like, a technical definition of what a prestige television is, but prestige television is basically, um, think House of Cards, The Sopranos, uh, Breaking Bad, Mad Men. Those are, like, the shows that, like, st uh, Weeds, those were the shows that started, um... Uh, prestige television. It's basically really high budget, generally very self-serious uh, television shows that are designed to, that are like, they're usually about big topics, aka they talk about politics or they talk about serious controversial issues. Um, uh, yeah, it's film directed television. Yes, that's a great way of putting. The Wire is another example. Um, yes, most of Sorkin's stuff is considered prestige television. Um, in fact, a lot of Sorkin stuff influenced a lot of the, like, shitty prestige television. Unfortunately, now, uh, prestige television doesn't really, it, it's not, a, a, it's a genre full of garbage. There is a lot of, like, fake prestige television, like shows like This Is Us, and other shows like that, uh, is the one that comes to mind, uh, that are just cringe because they sort of like attempt to throw money uh, at a show that's supposed to say something big, but they don't actually have anything big to say. Um, it's not terribly prestigious. Well, it's still, it's not prestigious anymore, ironically. I don't know if it ever really was. I think the prestige was there because of the, the size of the budgets and the sort of, the, the ambition of the shows. They wanted to make shows that say a lot of things. Um, and that are big and challenging and whatever. And a lot of them do not do that. Um, at all. Yeah, self-seriousness. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mad Men, I think Mad... Oh, th there are great prestige shows. Don't get me wrong. Um, I liked what I saw of Mad Men. I haven't seen the whole series. Breaking Bad is fantastic. Um, obviously. Uh, everybody loves The Sopranos, although I haven't seen Sopranos. Um, yeah. There's like a, there's a lot of ones. Band of Brothers is sort of, okay, Band of Brothers was like, didn't that come out in like 2004? Hold on, when did that come out? 2001. So that would have, Band of Brothers would have sort of preceded the, um, the prestige push. But yes, it was a high budget show with a bunch of well-known, like, A-list movie actors. That's the thing that kind of makes prestige television stand out. Giant budgets high concept shows that have um that have like a lot like actual like movie celebrities in them okay to be fair yes yeah, sopranos did start in the in 1999 but it ran for how many years like seven right anyway regardless that was a long intro because i wanted to explain what i meant by prestige television uh, Breaking Bad is probably one of the best of the prestige television genre. Um, and boy, does it deserve that fame. Um, I definitely, like, I watched the, the first uh, two and a half seasons of Breaking Bad uh, back when it was coming out. And then I got distracted with life and I didn't get back to it. And I really regret that I didn't because, uh, oh my God, is it good? 
it's just a great show. And and one of the best things about the show, I think, is that like all of the characters are extremely, extremely well done with very few exceptions. Um, Hank, uh, portrayed by the actor Dean Norris, who you all know from the meme, you know, the smile, angry face, that's him. That's the guy. Uh, Hank is a great character. Walt is an amazing character. Jesse is a great character with a fucking, with fucking great acting. Gus is the, the MVP, Gus and Mike. Oh man, there's so many, so many, uh, good characters. So, uh, what, what is the show about? Well, it's about a lot of things. A lot of people would say it's, oh, it's about capitalism. I don't really think it is. Uh, I don't think the show does a really good job meaningfully commentating on uh, the economy or or the politics of economy uh, particularly well. A lot of people sort of fixate on the fact that like, oh, Walt didn't have money. Um, but that is just an excuse, really. Um, the fact that Walt doesn't have any money is just an excuse for the real, uh, the, the sort of, it's a setup to expose Walt at, for what he is, which is a totally dysfunctional person who is addicted to toxic masculinity. Um, yeah, it is about, it's about narcissism. It's about ego, ego. It's about the, it's about pride. It's about, uh, toxic masculinity. It's about, uh, most of all, it is about, uh, I think, uh, masculine relationships, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, that's a bit of a weird takeaway, but I don't think so. Um, there is an, an incredible amount of, of attention paid to the types of relationships that men form with one another. And I think this can be frustrating for some people, uh, specifically, uh, for people who are looking for like super, super strong female characters because Breaking Bad has one, maybe two. Um, and that is unfortunate. However, it's a show that's meant to talk about relationships between men. And, um, I think that's, oh yeah, I can put some text up. Hold on. No, I guess it's better. Best up here. Okay. So, um, if you hated Skylar, you haven't been paying attention. Um, okay. I want to talk about that. The Skylar, the Skylar discussion, but I got to finish this first. So let me talk about what I'm talking about, about the me me relationship between men. Um, this show is almost erotically fixated. And, and I mean that, and I'm, I'm going to go there because you know what? It's pride month and we're going to talk about kink and we're going to talk about sex and we're going to talk about gay shit. Um, this entire show is radiantly gay in the, in the straightest way possible. There's a scene. Let me explain the scene to you. Okay. Gustavo Fring, the, uh, the secret mysterious drug distributor and kingpin, uh, 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 calls Walt, Jesse, and Mike, and two gangsters out to the middle of nowhere for a meeting. And the, uh, the goal is Gus is trying to squash a beef between Jesse and two of his dealers. And Jesse wants to kill these guys because they killed his friend, okay? Now, in this conversation, there is a, par a part where Walt is sitting across the table, or, sorry, sorry, Walt is sitting, is standing, like, next to Jesse, and Gus is sitting across the table, and Gus tells Jesse, you are going to make peace with my guys. My guys are going to stop doing the thing that pissed you off, and you're going to make peace with them. Do you understand? And Jesse looks over at Walt, and Gus yells at him. He says, look at me, not him. If it wasn't for this man, and the respect I have for him, I would be dealing with this in a very different way. You don't look at him, you look at me. And uh, that moment is, first of all, remarkably gay, just so you know. It's, it's one saying, I'm, it's, it's a guy saying, I'm your daddy, not him. Literally uh, power cucking a, uh, a, a, a power cucking uh, Walt using Jesse. 
And, and this is a recurring element throughout the entire show. And in fact, you can begin to predict how Walt is going to act once you understand that he sees Jesse as his basically gay little son. And that is the way that Walt uh, Walt wants to control and project himself and 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 he wants to be Jesse's everything. He wants to be Jesse's daddy. And I'm not kidding you. I'm dead serious. That is the entire show. The entire show is Walt trying to be Jesse's daddy and doing so in the most abusive, most horrible ways imaginable because he cannot admit that that's all that he wants. What he really wants is to is for someone to see him as a savior and he keeps trying to force people into this position of him saving them, of being the daddy, even if they don't want it from him, which leads to so much. Eris, you, you have entered into the gay analysis of Breaking Bad. And I'm not kidding you, just so you know. There is literally a portion, there's a part where there's multiple parts. Uh, specifically, there's a scene where Walt is high um, on uh, pain medication and he accidentally says, I love you, Jesse, instead of uh, his son's name, Flynn. He says, oh, love you, Jesse. Thank you. Like, if you don't think that that is the most blatant way that a show can say, Walt wants to be Jesse's daddy. There you have it. So that it, the entire show is more or less about this. And in fact, if you if you think about if you look at it this way, once you realize that that's Walt's entire motivation, think about it like this. Walt doesn't kill the he doesn't personally uh kill the gangsters that fucked up his his business partner until after specifically immediately after um uh gus uh cucks him in front of jesse gus tells jesse look at me not at walt and when walt hears that that's when it's over for gus from then on out gus won't do because walt knows that gus is trying to be jesse's daddy and there's a later conversation that I think further reinforces this. Mike. Mike is the, the sort of hitman character. Um, uh, is a sort of, yeah, exactly. There's a hitman character um, with uh, uh, named Mike. Most of you who've seen the show know this. And in the final scene between Mike and Walt, there's this explosive confrontation where, Mal where Walt says, uh, where Walt is like, Oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. Give me the names. I got to do this. And then Mike says, you know, you really fucked everything up. If it wasn't for you, everything would still be fine. Gus would still be here because, of course, Walt finds a way to kill Gus. Uh, and, and Mike is like, if only you knew your fucking place. Mike was saying, if only you knew that Gus was a better dad than you. If he was the Gus was the real daddy that you won't ever be. Mike, an older man. Gus was Mike's daddy. Like a hundred percent. He was loyal to him. He did what he treated him like family. He obeyed him. He listened to him. He respected him. All of this falling apart like this is on you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's some kind of logic right there, Mike. You screw up, get yourself followed by the DEA, and now suddenly, this is all my fault. Why don't you walk me through this, Mike? We had a good thing, you stupid son of a bitch. We had Fring. We had a lab. We had everything we needed. It all ran like clockwork. Oh, you could have God. shut your mouth, cooked, and made as much money as you ever needed. It was perfect. But no, you just had to blow it up. You and your pride and your ego. You just had to be the man. If you'd done your job, known your place, we'd all be fine right now. All of the show is about these relationships. It's about power dominance relationships between men. Sometimes gay men, like Gus, Gus is a gay man. 
Awkward, awkward renegade said, yes, he was very possessive of Jesse, but also because he needs him too. He can't do the thing without Jesse. That's not true. It was established multiple times throughout the show that Walt is perfectly capable of doing even, even doing better without Jesse. Um, Gail Bedecker, when, when the little, the, oh yeah, that's another example. The gay, the, the extremely, extremely gay, a chemist who literally comes to worship Walt, who literally says, my shining star, Walter White. The, 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 the effeminate gay scientist guy who falls in love with Walter White, but Walt doesn't want him. Walt wants Jesse. And so he says, I can't do it without Jesse, even though it is shown that he absolutely could. And that Gail is a way better chemist than Jesse could ever be and more passionate about making meth. But Walt wants Jesse. So, uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think, uh, like, uh, I think that this show has a lot of room for an analysis of sort of sexual, uh, sexual power dynamics between men. And I think that's one of the main things that Breaking Bad, uh, touches on is these horrible, toxic relationships that people form with one another, um, largely because they're not able to speak the truth because they're unable to be emotionally vulnerable and the way that fathers, daddies, uh, whether they're biological or not, whether they're biological fathers or father figures or literal, uh, gay lovers that, that, um, there is a, it is commentating on the cycle of traumatizing the sort of hazing rituals that men do to one another, the way that, that uh, men traumatize and harm one another and lots of other people in this process of building loyalty, of building dominance. See, truly. Um, uh, it, a lot of the fans were so homophobic, they denied that both of these characters were gay. No, they are both very obviously gay. Uh, uh, Gail Bedecker writes a, writes an entire, uh, he, he writes a, a manual that is full of loving drawings and notes and, and poetry all for Walt. Gail was in love with Walt. There's no way around that. Um, and also, uh, Gus is absolutely gay. Gus, uh, Gus's, um, Gus's entire story, uh, started because his, his boyfriend was murdered by, uh, by the cartel and that that started his revenge plot. He started an entire uh, plot to get revenge on the cartel, which he succeeded in all because they killed his gay lover. Um, yeah, Gus is undeniably gay. Also, uh, the, the, like, uh, all of his, uh, Gus's greatest secret where he hid his money was put on the back of a picture of his boyfriend. So, um, Breaking Bad does this amazing job of portraying the, the sort of, uh, addictive, narcissistic, uh, toxic way that, like, power is brokered between men, and also how it is so self-defeating, and also how it is so destructive. There are so many points in the story where Walt could have simply told the truth to any a, a number of characters where he could have just been truthful and honest and he would have most likely had a better uh, had a better chance of succeeding at uh, at what he uh at what he really wanted but he doesn't and there are reasons why he doesn't that are not entirely irrational um like uh like let me give an example of this there is a part in the show where Walt gets finally exposed to Skylar and Skylar finds out that he has been selling meth. He's been cooking and selling meth and that he has, uh, um, like $900,000 to his name or something along those lines at this point. And the first thing that happens, the moment that that happens, Skylar immediately gets super involved in everything that Walt is trying to do. And now, from Skylar's perspective, this is perfectly rational. Skylar uh, has been blocked out of the life of her dying husband for months and months and months, 
and now she has an opportunity to exert some say on her own life. And so, of course, she wants to get involved, of course. But from Walt's perspective, Walt says, uh, you know, Walt, his entire life has been being taught that basically if you show emotion, if you if you if you show weakness, you are a lesser male. And especially in the first season, they hammer on this so, so goddamn much. And in the first season, there's this let me see if I can find it. Um, there's a scene where he, where, uh, okay, let me, let me try again. There's a scene in which Marie, um, basically, uh, she, she pulls a favor and has like a local news team come and spotlight, uh, the, uh, the donation drive, uh, website. I don't know if anybody remembers that plot line, but one, at one point when they're struggling with money, uh, Walter Jr., uh, comes up with the idea to run a, a PayPal-based website that will allow people to donate anonymously to help him pay for his cancer. And he really doesn't like this. And Marie does them a favor by, uh, by having him uh, appear on TV. And there's this really amazing shot where he's just, he's sitting on the couch like this. Yeah, save my dad. Save my dad. Yeah. Um, and he's just, he's sitting on the couch like this, like clearly uncomfortable. He looks incredibly sick. He didn't ask for any of this. Um, and they're portraying him as like this sort of pathetic victim. And I think that scene is the scene where a lot of people can, is like one of the scenes where a lot of people can really get into Walt's head. Where Walt, his entire life has been, uh, beaten over his head and abused by this toxic patriarchal structure that says you must be hyper masculine you must never show weakness and all throughout the first season hank does that to him all the time there are like hank is perpetually digging at walt for the entire first season every scene with hank hank it makes a joke emasculating walter constantly and that's terrible and it really hurts walt and that is um by the way from uh, within the show's like internal logic that's supposed to be representative of shit that walt has been dealing with his entire life of perpetually being told not to be uh vulnerable and having every vulnerability every possible weakness about his personality constantly attacked by more masculine men around him and i think that's the like the tragedy of the show the central tragedy is that the, all of the show everything that happens in the show is a product of this perpetual uh, uh uh passive social abuse that men do to one another and uh and again and and keep in mind that he does that to jesse he replicates that onto jesse almost immediately he tells jesse oh jesse you're too stupid you don't know how to take care of yourself you're a druggie you're just like a failure you know he constantly undermines jesse's independence and masculinity just like has been done to him and of course when each character that comes into the show is a representative uh, of different types of masculinity Wh whether you have gus who gus is like a cold completely walled off secretive psychopath who doesn't let anybody in at any point um to his emotional state uh uh but gus uh gus is basically the perfect uh patriarchal male it, he has no wife he has no kids uh he is devoted entirely to his vision of the world he he is he is ruthless when he needs to be he rewards loyalty he treats his minions generally very well um he's a bad person no doubt um but he represents the ideal that that walt can never be um and there's multiple scenes like this like remember there's a scene that's very on the nose where uh, where Gus is talking just to Walt and he says, you're going to keep cooking because that's what a man does. A man provides. Notice that? That is something I think a lot of people sleep on that scene, even though that scene is very heavy. It's very in your face that like, yes, uh, 
yeah, that's the sh that's one of the main themes of the show is this idea that like, oh yeah, uh, it's it's Gus saying you are not a real man. You wish you could be like me, but you're not. And it's true. Walt at the end of the show, Walt is like Gus. At what cost? He loses everything. Um, the show is is a. <coughs> The show does a really good job of putting somebody who is not traditionally masculine, who is not uh, uh, your your mask guy, putting him into how do I find a way to fill that role at whatever cost? And the answer is really at whatever cost. You have to pay an incredible, incredible price to have this illusion of security, this idea that has been hazed into you from the time that you stepped into the world. I'm excited to watch Better Call Saul. I haven't seen that. Uh, Psychosocialism says that the man provides shit, weighs on men to this day, and it's sad. It doesn't just weigh on men, it kills men. It kills men and it kills people who are forced into the position of playing the role of man. Notice that like, um, I mean, our whole society is built on this, right? Like even to this day, even though our society has changed so much, a, a lot of our laws, a lot of our institutions are ultimately built around the idea that the man is the provider. Um, the man is the one who goes and does the work and brings back the food, and the woman is not that. But it's not true. It's never been true. It has never been the case that men are the providers. It is ne That has never been the case. Through all of history, even in societies that try to enforce this really stringently, Parents are always mutual providers. Communities are always mutual providers. And by the way, this is something that is hammered on throughout the show constantly. Whether it's Hank helping Walt, whether it's Walt helping Hank, whether it's Marie taking care of the kids, whether it's uh, Mike watching out. Oh, yeah, Mike saves Walt's life like four times without even telling him. Just because he's like, man, you don't know what you're doing. There are so many examples of people providing for other people and the people who are secure in their version of masculinity have no problem accepting help or giving help. But people like Walt, uh, who are insecure in this, who've been badgered by it, who've been beaten by it, who don't fit into it naturally, can either choose to accept help at the cost of being seen as lesser than by the patriarchal society, or they can choose to try to force themselves into the roles that these other people fill. But at the end of the day, all of that is just a lottery. It's just a lottery. Whether you're born like a, uh, a, a perfect masculine male is a, is a matter of lottery. Whether you like traditionally masculine roles, whether you can exist in a world of strict dominance it is totally up to, up to lottery. And to me, that was the biggest takeaway for me out of Breaking Bad, was this, per, this, this very frank, very uh, uh, in-your-face analysis of the cycles of toxic masculinity that produce Walter White-type figures. And boy, is there a lot of that. God, it just keeps going all the way until the end. Um, and there's, of course, all kinds of other things. But I think the show really... The show doesn't really... I don't think the show does a good job, like, commentating on crime. I don't think the job the show does a good job commentating on, like, marriage struggles, necessarily. I don't think the show does a very good job commentating on economic issues. Not because it's like it tries to and fails. I just don't think that's what it's talking about. I think what it's talking about is masculinity. And I think what it's talking about is how men interact with each other in ways that destroy the entire world. The, this, this, and, and, oh, by the way, you even see this reflected in characters like Saul. Saul Goodman, even though, like, everybody, everybody loves Saul. Everybody thinks he's the funniest guy. The dude is the biggest, most open misogynist in the entire planet. He literally sexually harasses his, 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 uh, uh, his secretary constantly. The guy, uh, all, he sees women as, like, 
problems that need to be dealt with and put and put and, and put away. He he mostly refers to Skylar as a problem, and he always sides with Walt because Walt is the man that he needs to be afraid of because Skylar won't hurt him. The whole show is just the most uh, over the top, in your face analysis of masculinity that you can sort of possibly imagine. And it's really funny, too, because there's multiple examples of situations where, like, women are, are in the show are just as, as uh, ambitious and bloodthirsty uh, as, as male characters in the show, but they're not, in the, they're not engaged in the same dynamic. They're just pulled along for the ride. The best example of this being Jane, Skylar, and then the character Lydia. Um... Oh, it's possible that like out in Better Call Saul, they go, they build up on that. But as far as the purpose of, um, as far as what we see in, uh, in, uh, in, in Breaking Bad, most of Saul's engagements with women are him, uh, are, are him basically making them do sexual favors for him or, uh, sexually harassing them. I I'm sure they probably change it for Better Call Saul, but in Breaking Bad, that is the way that it is. Um... So let's talk about these female characters. This is going to be one of the most. Um, uh, uh, this is going to be one of the more controversial uh, sections, I think. Um, Chad uh, Friday, Walt is his client. Actually, both Walt and Skyler are his clients, uh, uh, it, because they never actually get divorced. Wa uh, Walt isn't just his isn't his only client. Uh, he's only his only client because Walt literally threatens with violence, Saul. He, Walt threatens Saul multiple times, and I believe he actually hits Saul. I know Jesse hits Saul. Um, but yeah. Uh, Saul gets beaten up a lot, and if you if you notice, it's because Saul is also a uh, atypical male. Have you noticed that? Saul is, he's, he's wimpy, he's cowardly, he, 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 he gives up immediately, he doesn't want to get hit, he has a Hello Kitty, uh, a Hello Kitty phone. He's he's foppish. He he's showy. Better call Saul. He's he's super faggy, basically, um, and and as a result, and in from Walt's perspective, he despises Saul because of this, and uh, and so does Mike. By the way, Mike hates dealing with with Saul because Saul is like a wimpy gay male in their mind. Yeah, and I and I love Saul because I I think you know I think faggots are great personally, um, but uh, even even if even for his flaws, but uh, but yeah I got I will be don't worry we're watching Better Call Saul next. Well next we have to watch El Camino then we're gonna watch Better Call Saul, um, but but yeah uh, so let's talk about the female characters of the show because that is uh like like. It has to be talked about, okay? So let's talk about that. First up, let's talk about Jane. Jane is a character that I know a lot of people get really mad about. Um, one of my partners got really frustrated about Jane, specifically because Jane does basically get fridged. Um, which, if you're not familiar with the term fridge, um, the term fridge uh, is like a, a shorthand for a, uh, a trope in 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 uh popular culture where a female character is fridged aka killed aka put in a fridge it refers to a like serial killer putting a dead body in a fridge and uh and a woman getting fridged means she's killed so that her husband can have a story arc and uh and yeah and uh yes so Jane does get fridged. Jane gets killed so that Jesse can have a more interest so that Jesse and Walt can have a more interesting story arc. However, however, I will note something, okay? And I want you to think about this. Um which is that Walt is the one who fridges Jane. Walt literally it is literally because of Walt. Walt breaks in to try and get the meth. 
so that he can sell it with Gus, so he can make $3 million from Gus. He breaks into the house and he bumps Jane over, which causes her to choke and overdose. Walt, and he chooses not to turn her back over. It was Walt who chose to recreate the very trope that we're talking about here. And I think that's a very deliberate choice that Jane is this like awesome, beautiful character and Walt, the most toxically masculine character in the entire fucking show, more than anybody else, he is the most toxically masculine character, um, kills her just so that him and Jesse can have more of a story together. <laughs> True! Confirmation that Gus is gay. Look, Gus isn't looking at her. Is he gay or something? Yeah, if you know this scene, you know why this is extra funny. That's the scene where Gus kills 12 people at once. By poisoning himself and them and almost dying. Gus is amazing, by the way. Gus is my favorite character in Breaking Bad. Um, Gus followed shortly by Mike... Uh, followed shortly by uh, probably, I probably would say Walt is my third favorite character. And not because I like Walt. I hate Walt. Walt is the most pathetic, uh, unlikable, horrible person you can possibly imagine. Um, and, uh, but I think he's so interesting and he's so good at being a, a scummy, cowardly liar bitch. It's so great. Um, oh, it's amazing. Anyway, let's continue talking about Jane, okay? So Jane is a character who uh, basically gives Jesse a reason to live. She goes out of her way and puts herself in danger, by the way, because she does get back on drugs because of her being with Jesse. Um, but she finds her struggle with drugs to be less important than her connection with Jesse. And I think she might actually be right on that. I think that her and Jesse... Like, even though they encourage each other back into drugs, they also actually meaningfully care for each other, and they seem like they're actually going to be able to overcome things together until Walt gets involved. And when Walt takes J Jane out of the equation, Jesse basically has nothing to live for. And at every occasion that, that he tries to get something else to live for, Walt takes it away. Walt deliberately takes away things from Jesse constantly specifically so that Walt is the only person that Jesse has left over and over and over again and this goes all the way until the moment that Walt dies the only reason that Jesse ends up in slavery is because of Walt the only reason that Jesse gets out of slavery is because of Walt and at the end of the story, when Walt dies, Jesse has no one. He doesn't have Saul. He doesn't have Mike. He doesn't have his parents. He doesn't have Jane. He doesn't have, uh, Aunt, what was her name? Angela? The other girl? There's slavery, yes. At the end of the show, uh, a bunch, a Nazi gang literally puts Jesse into, they literally put him in a hole uh, where he's exposed to the elements and then they tie him up to a leash and make him cook meth as a, as a, as a meth slave. Oh, he does have Badger and Skinny Pete. Although, uh, I don't know how helpful they are. Praised BB says, I can't believe how many people defended Walt's abuse when the show aired. It was so bad. Yes, that is a weird thing. I understand why people sympathize with Walt because he is the main character and we get to see everything he goes through, but there is no doubt about it. Walt is 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 a horrifically abusive person. He is not he is not a a uh even he's not even a good criminal. He's a terrible criminal. He's just so deeply manipulative and he's so good at gaslighting and deceiving people. Um that uh that that he he's able to uh to sort of take control um yeah and and <sighs> anyway i want to focus on we're gonna this this actually leads me to the next part skylar skylar okay 
Skyler is yet another controversial character. A lot of people say that Skyler's writing is not well done. I don't actually I don't actually agree with that. I think Skyler was written pretty well. And uh, I think it's interesting to me the way that people basically see Skyler's sort of mundane flaws as being justification for all of the horrific nightmare shit that Walt does. And I, I want to be clear, uh, Skyler is a flawed person, like very much so. There are a lot of, there are a lot of points in the story where I think that Skyler makes a decision that is like really bad. For example, um, when she encourages Walt to kill Jesse, that is entirely spite based. Um, the way she treats Jesse throughout the entire thing, she basically blames Jesse for Walt being a piece of shit, even though it's the other way around. Walt absolutely made Jesse a worse person, not the other way around. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, Skylar does cheat on Walt, um, which is pretty shitty. But, uh, I also don't, I also, I think it's very fucked up that some people... Or, or perhaps, I mean, I think it's, I think it's intentional. I think the show was hoping to provoke people to think about this a little more. I think some people didn't think about this, um, really. But, uh, I think that people, the show kind of wants you to hate Skylar in a certain way because you're supposed to feel what Walt is feeling. You're supposed to feel that, like, tension and that displeasure. But you have to recognize that the entire time Skylar is feeling that as well. From the very beginning of the show, from the moment the show begins, Walt is withdrawn. He's emotionally unavailable. He's cold. He's a lie. He's an unbelievable liar. All he does is lie. He even on mundane things. He even lies about small mundane things. Why defend Skylar? No, because Skylar deserves to be defended on a certain level. Like. Truly, I don't believe that Skylar's abusiveness ever touches the level of abusiveness that Walt is is engaged in on a, on a regular basis. Um, uh, it's like it, it's it's like 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 Skylar's worst thing is that she's a bit of a nag, like that she's a nag and she's passive aggressive at times. Like I think that there are times where she's like um, where she's bad marie is 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 abusive to walt i mean marie little t literally tells walt to kill himself multiple times uh i think that uh that walt walt jr has a, has like <laughs> walter jr tells uh tells walt to die twice and i think that's kind of hurtful and terrible i i think walter jr is a great character and i love him and he's a kid so it's a little bit more forgivable he's like literally 15 at the beginning or 16 at the beginning of the show and like 18 by the end um marie is the worst uh i love marie i think she's really funny but also she's the worst marie is racist marie is a serial liar marie is a gaslighter uh marie uh constantly involves herself where she doesn't belong she constantly endangers other people because she can't take responsibility for the things that she does she mistreats she treats uh skylar like shit i don't even care about the kleptomania like i think that's her least bad thing like her stealing shit from rich people is like the least bad trait does she yes uh, yes, she does. She does engage in gaslighting on numerous occasions. When 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 Skylar confronts her about the fact that Marie gave Skylar a stolen piece of jewelry that almost got Skylar arrested um, by complete accident, um, Marie literally lies directly to her face for the entire show. She never admits it, even when she's confronted with the facts. Multiple times, she literally just says, I don't know what you're talking about. You sound crazy. Marie is absolutely a gaslighter. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Marie is, is, 
uh, Hank, also just a terrible person. Um, but also, you can't help but kind of like Hank because because Dean Norris is such a good actor. Dean Norris is such a fucking good actor. By the way, let me just give a quick shout out since we're talking about uh, Hank's character. Um, he plays, he does such a good job of like playing, of like acting out a, like a tough guy, DEA guy being reduced to literal tears by panic attacks and PTSD. It's unbelievable. Oh yeah, she like run over the kid's car for fun because she's just pissed off. And, and Hank is like, Hank is, Hank is also racist as fuck. He's also sexist as fuck. He's also extremely toxically masculine. This guy dumps, he, he, sh his entire personality is constantly cutting down everyone around him so that he feels like the top, top dog. And of course he's a cop, which we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Um, yeah, he's bad bad news so then there's another character uh so let's continue talking about skylar though i don't want to get too distracted skylar so skylar uh is basically she's justified throughout the entire show because not because she's like technically correct because i think that like skylar's um skylar's approach to to everything is super super hypocritical like i mean she is she's clearly incapable of like showing any mercy on her husband when her husband gets smokes weed like when she thinks her husband is smoking weed because of his cancer um she literally like goes and ruins that for him she goes and confronts jesse and skylar does a lot of things that i think are like across the line skylar does a lot of things to undercut her husband however uh, also, she's just, like, weirdly pro-cop at all times. Um, however, she's proven correct on basically everything simply because Walt is so deceptive, so incapable of treating her like a person, that basically all of her decisions were the rational decision at that point if you step into her shoes. If you look into her shoes, you see that, like, uh, every single decision that she makes is basically the wisest decision that she can make for her and her kids. And uh, I think that, like, in that way, it really does a good job. Like, the writing does a good job of showing how little Walt actually cares about Skylar while also illustrating how much Skylar actually does give a shit about her family. Um, because she really does. Uh, every single, like everything from forcing Walt to get the, uh, to get the, uh, the, the car wash, by the way, excellent play on, on her part. She, she ensured that they would have a business that can pay for them for the rest of their lives. Uh, uh, you know, despite Walt being basically like, no, no. Based. But keep in mind, excuse me, she is laundering money and doing a tax evasion fraud on behalf of Beneke while being judgmental to Marie and being super judgmental to Walt. So like on a, on like a moral philosophy level, I disagree with Skylar, but on like a situational, like how does Skylar cope with being put in all these situations? Skylar is like, totally rational in every single way um like so yeah uh i do think there are some parts where skylar really loses uh loses like but i think that's skylar being sort of forced into a position i mean keep in mind like uh killers come into her house her baby gets threatened at gunpoint her house gets set on gas uh, on or almost gets set on fire with gasoline um, like, uh, God, like there's just, there's just an endless amount of stuff that Walt puts Skylar through that Skylar has no say in. And it's interesting how one of Walt's main frustrations is that he has no say in anything in his life. 
It's a recurring theme. While I, I don't have any control over anything. I don't have any control. I don't, I don't, I'm not alive. I'm just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get to make it. I don't have any say in my life. I don't have any say in getting cancer. I don't have any say in my family. They just make me do all these embarrassing things all the time. And yet, the first, at the first opportunity, Walt does that exact same thing to Skylar. Walt makes it so that Skylar has functionally no agency whatsoever. Anyway. So, uh, I think there's, I think Skylar is a well-written character. If, if you're looking at the show from the perspective of it being a, a, analysis of toxic masculinity and then there's another there's one more character that i want to talk about one more female character in this show that i want to talk about uh lydia fuck lydia okay uh fuck lydia oh god lydia is the most hateable most beautifully hateable person that you can possibly imagine oh my god um Hey, is Demon Mama gay? Yes, I am. Uh, what do I use as pronouns? Uh, she, her. Thank you. Uh, so, Lydia. Boy, we got a lot to say about, about Lydia. Um, boy. So, Lydia is, uh, Lydia is a powerful woman. Um, a powerful woman who uh who becomes powerful by essentially emulating men in every way that she possibly can which she is totally ill suited for she she dresses up she tries to dress up super sharp she presents herself as a confident business business person she uh she plays dominance games she threatens to have people killed constantly she's the number one person who's constantly trying to get people killed she tries to play the game but she's once again much like walt totally unsuited for it she is cowardly she is she is not a a cutthroat uh, dominance player she likes um she likes working out numbers she likes taking risks uh she likes um she likes she's clearly obsessed with logistics but she's also an anxious wreck she's constantly put down and mistreated by the men around her that she inevitably has to work with um and uh yeah and and of course like literally mike when you watch the parts with mike mike literally treats her like a child um so it's it's very uh it's very interesting how how the show chose to portray the major female characters of the show and how there is there is a it in my opinion there's a deliberate attempt to show how women uh, that it's a show about toxic masculinity and it shows how women have to engage with toxic masculinity in order to survive so you have various types you have the lydia type lydia survives toxic masculinity by emulating a biz by emulating a crime businessman she does all the things that a crime businessman would do including threatening death and and all of this shit like that uh skylar she gets through it by putting her by basically putting her head down and uh and just and just trying to 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 suppress herself to survive skylar literally goes catatonic she just goes at the at the end of the show she just there's a point in the show where she stops uh you actually can see this it's a very deliberate choice they start showing her being like severely depressed and that's her thing her way of surviving is by basically gray rocking walt she becomes so boring to walt that walt can't walt usually isn't willing to hurt her until the very end where walt's bullshit finally boils over puts her in danger and then she slashes walt with a knife um i'll talk I, i'll talk about mike in a second um so you have that type of surviving this shit you have the marie type which is that marie basically latches herself completely to a strong guy which is hank and and marie is just a homemaker and white and professional wife which you know okay 
but that's the way that that's the like like marie basically lives up to the the feminine standard that all these people want she goes away when she's told to uh for the most part she's gossipy she's domestic she's a uh, style oriented she loves her her little fancy purple doilies and all that shit um so uh those are like that's the, and then you have us uh, so wait we have skylar oh and then you have jane jane who is the only like female character whose response to uh masculine dominance is outright rebellion um and, and and i mean like true outright rebellion uh jane neither embraces like she doesn't she doesn't become masculine in order to fit into this this standard she doesn't change herself in that way uh she uh her her dad is a horrible oh, oh yeah that's another character we didn't even talk about we didn't even talk about jane's fucking crazy dad her obsessive hyper overprotective controlling uh dad who breaks into her place on numerous occasions um and jane is the only one who's basically like uh well i'm not gonna deal with that i'm gonna live on my own i'm gonna make my own decisions well and she's killed for it she's literally killed because she chooses to just be herself and it it's no coincidence by the way that jane is the one who has like appreciation of female of feminine art and also has appreciation of jesse's uh non-masculine traits do you remember who the only person in the entire show who appreciated jesse's art was jane jane is the only person who ever got to see jesse's goofy vulnerable uh you know frilly superhero art and and she's the only one who got to do that and so she dies for it walt kills her for being a threat to the masculine order that is presented by walt and the people like him andrea unfortunately i feel like they they under they under they underdid andrea which kind of sucks Also, just so you know, Jesse and Jane is 100% the T for D, the T for T relationship. If you guys can't recognize that, that Jesse, Jane is a television representation of a T for T relationship that's technically like sold as like, you know, two cis people. No, it is so, it is so unbelievably T for T. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. I love it. Beautiful. Okay, hold on. I need to elaborate on this. Hold on. I don't think I need to elaborate. I'll just show you a picture and you'll understand. Hold on. I'll find the image. There's a literal shot. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Oh, I need the high quality ones. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'll get you. I'll get you your image. Watch this. And you'll understand what I'm talking about. Heh. <laughs> There's so many good pictures of them. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Come on. Come on! You're telling me that's not T for T? Come on. Come on. Come on, chatters. Give me a break. Give me a break. T for T means trans for trans. Okay? It is. Jesse has the... Oh, we had an episode by episode drip rating by Fawn. Fawn was doing Jesse drip rating. It was amazing. Every episode, uh, uh, Silent would be like, can we get a drip review? And then Fawn would be like, all right, I'm going to review the Jesse drip for this episode. Oh, Jane is definitely bisexual. I think Jesse's got good drip most episodes. He's got a couple misses. What do I think about Jesse and, and Mike as characters? Okay, that's how we'll wrap up my conversation about Breaking Bad. I'll talk about Jesse and Mike. So, Jesse. 
Jesse is Jesse and Skylar are the the victims of this story. Let's put it that way. Uh, Jesse is Jesse finally. So Jesse is an example of somebody who does not die, but basically uh, survives the hazing process, the masculine hazing process. Jesse is highly independent. Even he's very good at heart. He's a very sensitive person, but obviously he has ambitions. Some of them are problematic ambitions, um, but Jesse is not a person who likes to dominate other people. He does not like to put himself above others. He loves to achieve things. He loves to be good at certain things, but he doesn't like to put himself over other people. And as a result, he is seen as the he's the he's the little boy he's the little boy who needs to be rescued by mike who needs to be rescued by gus who needs to be rescued worst of all by walt and everything that jesse loves is stolen away by walt throughout the course of this story walt uh ruins his house walt uh kills his girlfriend walt uh poisons the kid that he cares about um Walt literally ends up getting him put into slavery, uh, almost kills him. Uh, and then finally, Walt lets him out of slavery, but only in time to die uh, uh, alongside a bunch of white nationalists, which was the only good thing. Um, Jesse, I fucking love Jesse. And I think Jesse is probably one of the like the most morally good people in the entire um, in the entire show. But uh uh, but his mercy is almost a disadvantage and that sucks because the way that he, the fact that he constantly wants to give people another chance the fact that he doesn't like resolving things by violence that he hates using violence so much means that he can't actually deal with people like Walt it means he can't actually deal with people like uh like Gus because he is he is capable of being preyed upon by them because of his good nature. And that is part of the thing that I think is talked about in the show. By the end of the show, can I get a screenshot of Jesse at the last episode? Can I show you what Jesse looks like in the last episode? Yeah, let, let me show you what Jesse looks like in the last episode here. Here we go. By the end of the show, this is what Jesse looks like. He's literally been getting beaten and has been living in a pit and has been being a meth slave for Nazis. He was forcibly de he was forcibly uh uh uh, uh detoxed from multiple drugs. He was using meth he was using cocaine, he was using heroin, and then he got locked in a basement and forced to detox from all of those at the same time. Oh, of course he looks hot. Like, scarred up guys are hot, no doubt. He, like, Jesse Pinkman's a hot guy, no doubt. But, um, like, but this is, this, his outward appearance here is only a representative of his, like, inward state. Which is, um, which is that, like, he has nothing. Walt has taken everything everything from jesse walt has taken everything from jesse in the name of trying to shape jesse into his into a son that jesse doesn't want to be just jesse was open at various points to letting walt like guide him but but walt wasn't satisfied with teaching jesse he wasn't satisfied with guiding jesse or helping jesse he wanted to own jesse he wanted to be jesse's daddy the one and only and so jesse is punished perpetually tortured everything is taken away except for this masculine power structure that he's supposed to that he's being forced into and i think jesse's character is sort of supposed to be the example of what most people end up like basically hollowed out scarred up damaged not broken people they're not unsalvageable people they're just horrific they've been horrifically traumatized 
for actions that weren't theirs because other men wanted to put them in their place. This is a recurring theme. Uh, again, uh, Walt constantly undercuts Jesse, constantly browbeats Jesse with insults, constantly tries to put Jesse in his place. And of course, this leads us to Mike. Mike, the guy who seems to be doing the best until the very, very end of the show. Um, Mike is the masculine he is the non uh sorry he, he is the, the 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 right hand wolf okay he is the masculine ideal of the not king okay he is the <coughs> he is the king's advisor he is happy with his place in the hierarchy uh he literally says that he literally says walt if only you knew your place none of this would have gone like that the most meaningful scene like the most emotionally charged scene with mike is mike screaming at walt to know his place and yet we love mike mike is such a fucking sick ass character and it's weird how that works right that you that uh, that like it's almost like wow with Mike, you can see a version of this masculinity that makes sense. You can see a guy who's happy taking orders from Gus, from a guy who he sees as the strong father that he serves. And Walt fucks it up. But the truth is that, like, Mike is perpetuating this on everybody else. He, he does it to Walt. He does it to Lydia. He does it to Jesse. He's not as abusive. He's not as, um... He's not as horrible to any of them except for Walt. He really doesn't like Walt. He actually hates Walt, which is great to see because you love to see somebody who hates Walt. Um, but but in truth, he does the exact same. He does basically the exact same thing that Hank does, which is he's constantly undercutting other people around him. If people become dangerous to him or to his position, he kills them. And the 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 the, the reality with Mike is that. Even if you're the, the the obedient dog, even if you're the good son, the good son is horrifically punished because he exists in this uh, patriarchal, obsessive uh, structure of masculinity that 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 punishes everyone, not just the men, not just not just the men who don't belong, not just the gay men and the and the and the effeminate men. It punishes all men. Mike's relationship to Jesse. Notice that Mike is just better at building a a fatherly relationship with uh with Walt, but that he can't commit to it. So Jet Walt, Mike does treat Jesse better slightly. Keep in mind that the beginning of Mike and Jesse's relationship is Mike driving Jesse around with with like Jesse is unarmed. Mike is heavily armed and Jesse is being forced to ride around with Mike. And whenever he asks Mike what they're doing, Mike says, shut the fuck up. We're, I'll show you what we're doing. He does the same thing that Walt does. Throughout the show, a, a perpetual refrain is Walt telling people, just trust me. It's all going to be good. I have it under control. Trust me. I will provide. Mike does that to Jesse. He replicates the exact same thing. He's just better at it than Walt. He's just not as stupid and cruel and pathetic as Walt. But he does do the same thing. He still browbeats Jesse when Jesse doesn't do what he wants. He still threatens violence. Would you say Tuco is more of a toxically masculine figure than Walt? No, Tuco it just doesn't have any mask. That's the difference. Walt is ashamed. Walt is ashamed of of everything. Walt is like a sh a being of shame. Uh, Tuco has no shame whatsoever. Tuco is completely unhinged, uh, m like big mad dog type uh, masculinity. So, yeah. We mask mama. Yeah. So that's. Tuco is like, in my opinion, is just, he's just Walt if Walt didn't have a mask. Keep in mind that the reason why Walt gets away with so much stuff is because of how erratic he is. Um, the reason why he gets away with killing Gus is because his plan makes no fucking sense. It barely works. All of Walt's plans barely work. 
they get he gets away with it because he's uh because he is a smart guy and because he he is a creative liar and because he's so chaotic but walt's main trait is not that he's a good storyteller it's not even that he's a good chemist walt's main uh main effective trait is that he's such an unbelievable gaslighter that nobody knows what the truth is and therefore he's totally unpredictable there's a part where um there's a part where mike brings this up where mike says walt is trouble Walt, he, he, Mike just specifically says, like, I don't want to work with with Walt. Walt is trouble. He's 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 chaotic. He's unpredictable. He's violent, and he's right. He's not a good liar. He's just a gaslighter. He will lie no matter what. He even gaslights himself, if that's possible. He lies to himself constantly. Hey, good night, psychosocialism. Thanks for coming by. I think perhaps the saddest moment in the show. Um, yeah, that's true. The only time Walt doesn't lie is when he literally dies. Um, but uh, there's two really sad moments in the show. Jane's death is genuinely traumatizing. Like that is one of the best portrayals of like the horror of drug overdose. Um, uh, uh, that is just, it's just horrifying and incredibly sad, but there's another scene that I always remember, um, that I've been thinking of a lot. Um, and that's the scene where Walt is in the, uh, is in the, uh, cabin by himself. And the, uh, there's a guy who's like a disappearer. He's like a identity, identity guy. He's a, he's a guy who lets you disappear. He's a disappearer. Um, and the disappearer, delivers walt a uh a, a a care package every month to his to a cabin that he's hiding out in for a year so he basically when walt gets caught he goes and hides in the woods for a year to to like let the heat you know to, to like so the heat dissipates and there's a there's a scene where uh the the guy brings him a little key a little little bag of chemo and um walt walt uh, the, the, the disappear guy's like, hey, I watched some, some YouTube videos on how to put your chemo in. And then Walt's like, I'll do it. And then Walt realizes he doesn't know how to put chemo in at all. And uh, so then he lets, he lets, he kind of just deflates and he lets, um, he lets the disappear guy um, put the chemo needle in for him. And then at the, at, to make it like truly heart wrenching, He's like, could you stay for just an hour? And the guy goes, eh, you know, don't really feel like staying any longer. And then he goes, I'll give you $10,000 if you stay for, and play cards with me for two hours. And then the guy goes, 10000 one hour. So he is literally paying this guy $10,000, like just the most desperate, the most desperate and sad moment. Um where yeah it's it's really sad uh so yeah it's a really sad scene and and uh i don't know yeah it's sad but also walt you can't help but feel like walt deserves it oh of course there's the whole hank thing but but see hank you notice like uh Okay, Hank is a great example of, like, the masculine... Well, Hank and Gus are both examples of the masculine death cult. Um, Hank... Uh, Hank blisters forward constantly. Okay, Hank constantly breaks the law. He follows his hunches. He does whatever the fuck he wants, whenever the fuck he wants. Hank is a fully realized patriarchal male. There is basically... Except for when he gets paralyzed... There is basically no point in the story where Hank is not able to uh, to to live up to his own uh, pa patriarchal masculine ideal all the way to the end where he doesn't even try to save his own life. He just says, the Nazi's going to kill me anyway. Fuck you. So 
Yeah. Oh, Jesse's parents do suck, yes. But yeah, Hank Hank is like Hank again, like I said, most of the characters in this show are a form of like a form of of masculinity and and exploring how that type of masculinity engages with the general uh systemic structure of masculinity. Yeah, he decided to kill me 10 minutes ago. It is really sad. Gale is on the same level of Jesse, and I'm so sad he died. Yeah, they really... The only thing about Gale is you only know Gale for, like, three episodes, which sucks. Uh, I feel like they could have done a better job with Gale, but I don't know. I, that's probably one of my minor critiques of the show, is that it would have been nice to see more of Gale. So, summary. Uh, let's wrap up this uh, Breaking Bad conversation review, um, which has been quite long. Uh, but let's wrap it up with a little summary, which is uh, Breaking Bad is awesome. If you haven't seen it, even if you're now spoiled, please go watch it. It is a really good show. It's good from beginning to end. Um, the amount of episodes that I felt were like not like interesting is like two. I think there's like two episodes in the entire series that I felt were like subpar. It is so, 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 so good. Um, the acting is unbelievable. The soundtrack is a absolute banger. Um, the show is very funny. The writing is good. Um, oh, I did like, okay, the fly episode was weird. That is, that is, I will talk about that real quick. Let's talk about the fly episode. Um, the fly episode. The fly episode is such a weird episode. And also, I can't help but feel like uh like it's it's supposed to be almost like a a uh a like a like a like a, like a an alternate universe. There are things I like about it, and there are things I don't like about it. Um, in one, on one hand, it is it, as a, as a standalone episode, it's great. It's very entertaining. It's funny. It's extremely quirky. Um, in a in an almost like tongue in cheek redditor kind of quirkiness. Um, but it, it like Walt and Jesse aren't actually Walt and Jesse or rather Walt isn't Walt in that episode. And I think that's kind of part of the point. I think it's like, uh, like Walt basically having a, uh, a, I'm going to be completely blunt here. Walt has an autistic meltdown or an ADHD meltdown. He is, he is this fly is bothering the shit out of him. And because it's driving him crazy, he uh, tries to like, he tries to do the toxically masculine stuff, but it doesn't work because it's completely obvious that he's extremely obsessed with a fly. Um, and, and it is, uh, and, and also there's a section of the, of the episode where Jesse gives Walt sleeping pills. And then for like 15 minutes, Jesse just tells a story about his grant about his aunt with cancer losing her mind when the cancer went to her brain which is kind of like being like hey walt you're kind of being even more crazy than usual right now are you sure that you're like yourself and the answer is no the answer is uh the answer is no walt isn't himself he's drugged up uh he's he's drugged up he's distressed he's vulnerable and for the first time in the show, he opens up emotionally to Jesse in a way that actually mends his relationship with Jesse just a little bit. And it's because he basically has to be removed from all of the typical toxic male, toxic masculine energy that he's constantly surrounded around. It's kind of sadistic to tell a cancer patient. Well, actually, um, it was really compassionate. Uh, in the in the episode, it was really compassionate. Like Jesse, Jesse sees that Walt is not doing okay. Jesse sees that Walt is like literally not like he's overstimulated. He's freaking out. He's losing his mind. And Jesse basically sneaks him some sleeping pills, not to like, not for any selfish reason, but because he's afraid Walt is gonna hurt himself, which Walt 
does. Walt literally, in attempting to get the fly, he literally falls off of the top of the stairs and almost breaks his back. And um, so Jesse, like, Jesse tells this story about his, his, his aunt, not really to, like, do anything to Walt, but just to kind of lull him to sleep and remind him to take it a little slower. And Walt is, because Walt doesn't know that he's been, like, that he's been uh, hit with the, the, the sleeping pills, Walt accidentally reveals something genuine. This happens again in the part that I mentioned with Walt Jr., where Walt Jr. comes over and discovers um, Walt after he got beat up by Mike. And M Walt's all, like, pounded up, and, like, Walt's face is all beat up, and his son comes over, and he's high on uh, opioids, and he's crying to his son. He's like... And and this is the only time that Walter is genuine. Every time Walt gets inebriated in the show, whether it's him getting drunk, whether it's him high on some other substance, the truth of his personality starts to come out because he's completely, uh, he becomes completely dissociated from the structures that he exists within, from this obsession with dominance, this obsession with ego, this obsession with masculine pride and self-importance. So I do like the fly episode. Uh, I think it's weird, and when I first watched it, I kind of was like, hmm, I don't know. But I, I ended up liking it. Yeah. Well, everyone, that's the end of the Breaking Bad review. Uh, I loved watching Breaking Bad. It was a great show to watch. Um, it was a great show to watch, uh, uh after game of thrones which was an absolute disaster oh my god game of thrones was so bad and i i think like i think i have like uh like television i don't want to call it trauma let's call it television trauma okay i have television trauma about game of thrones because every time i find out that we're on the last like two seasons of a show i start to go oh when's it gonna get bad when's it gonna get bad breaking bad doesn't get bad it just doesn't it's it's good all the way through and it felt so good after game of thrones which is the worst ended show ever like holy shit the ending of by the way worse than lost just so you all know actually worse than lost lost was a better ending to a show than game of thrones game of thrones was a disaster so by comparison breaking bad was such a relief <laughs>